Good evening, and welcome to Wednesday worship. Please rise as we begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and, one of, and of one another. God, our rock and ref refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light, and giver of goodness. Your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated and we'll start our um, with our hymn, O oh Love How Deep, 322. Oh, verses 1 to 4. The first reading is from Genesis 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that light was good. 
and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was an evening, and there was a morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading is from, is from Acts, chapter 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Euphorius. When he found some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there, was, that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John, John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who is, was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Holy, of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophecies. Altogether, they were about 12 of them. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter, beginning at verse 4. Glory to you, o Lord. <clears throat> John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> Do you know that sometimes there's more to celebrate in a church year than the year has Sundays to cover it all? For instance, we Western Christians celebrate Epiphany January 6th, also known to some as Three Kings Day. No matter what name you prefer, it commemorates the baptism of Jesus. Then there is the Feast of Baptism, or the Baptism of our Lord, and that happens on the first Sunday after January 6th, or the first Sunday after Epiphany. And this year, of course, it's all the same weekend. Therefore, I was told I could speak on Epiphany Scripture or the Baptism of Our Lord Scripture. I chose the Baptism of Our Lord Scripture, and as I was preparing, found it fitting that this year, as other years, the two festivals feel, fall so close together. As it seems to me, you cannot have one without the other. Therefore, you are going to get a little epiphany along with a little baptism. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Epiphany comes with the term manifest, and while those are good words, I like to use even more simple words. Therefore, epiphany is to be made clear or to realize, see, or understand. And it was made very clear that Jesus was the Messiah, the Chosen One. Jesus is the promise kept by God. Then we have the baptism of our Lord. The baptism of Jesus is the beginning of his ministry, and it's the identity as the Son of God. Just as last week's scripture spoke of the presentation of Jesus to God in the temple and how it meant so much for Anna and Simeon, the people of Israel who were waiting so long for their Messiah. Our own baptism is very similar. Our parents, sponsors, and close family and friends 
bring us to the baptism font to present us to God and to begin, hopefully, our own life of ministry. Now that maybe sounds big and scary and like expectations are set quite high, but in reality, our life of faith and belief doesn't mean we need to do big, huge things. Some teach Sunday school or confirmation, some lead Bible study or share their gift of music through singing, piano playing, or other instruments. Some are ushers, worship leaders, scripture readers. Some serve on council, organize the church schedule, sit on a call committee. Some maintain the church property or count money. Some are faithful worshipers and givers. Some go to seminary or lay school or serve communion to shut-ins. Some are prayer warriors. Some are parents that continue to pass along the importance of faith and having God and Jesus in our lives. And my list could go on endlessly. And while in our eyes we may think what we do is unimportant and insignificant and certainly doesn't qualify as ministry, I assure you, every little bit counts. Every little bit matters. Everything we view as little, God views as big. For whatever you do for the least of these, brothers and sisters of mine, you did to me. Generally, when we think of baptism, we think of infants and toddlers. It's never a wrong age to be baptized. It's never a wrong age to present yourself to God and to begin your part of ministry in God's family. For it is said that Jesus was probably baptized around the age of 30. He was presented to God in the temple as an infant, yet his actual baptism is said to have taken place as an adult. We modern-day Christians combine the infant presentation of Jesus and the adult baptism of Jesus into one event. And therefore, at baptism, we present our children back to God, to whom we were created by and come from to begin with. Whenever it is we are baptized, we begin our faith journey. We become part of something far bigger than ourselves. We publicly profess we are children of God, and through the water and the power of the Holy Spirit, the promise of salvation is given then and there. And we are sealed with the mark of the cross upon our forehead. And that cross that is placed on our foreheads carries us through our whole lives right into eternal life. Baptism is the presenting of a child of God back to God. And that is something God wants for each of us as well as for himself at any age. God knows, you cre God knows you, created you, loves you, and while it is often said for those who believe and are baptized, God claims you long before you ever became a reality. God promises each of us love, forgiveness, and salvation. Believing in God and Jesus Christ is far more important than the act of baptism. Yet baptism is very important or I don't think John the baptizer would have played such a vital role in the life and ministry of Jesus. I urge you to get baptized if you are not. I urge you to continue to bring generation after generation to the waters of baptism. If for no other reason it is truly the beginning of something bigger, something we often aren't even aware how important it is to us until the last days of our earthly life. The feast of the baptism of our Lord closes the season of Christmas and opens the season referred to as ordinary time or the season of life. And isn't that quite fitting? Our life is generally quite ordinary. Whether we live for only one breath in this world or we live well into our hundreds and anywhere in between. The season of our ordinary lives can only become extraordinary by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that power is oftentimes found, rightfully so, in the cross. In closing, I would like to share with you the epiphany I have been given quite a few times in life, but it has never been made more clear in my life, in my heart, or in my mind, the realization that Jesus is the Messiah and Jesus Christ is truly a promise kept by God as it has in the recent year. I have been blessed with the ability and interest to visit those who are homebound or hospitalized for whatever reason, 
and I share with them the sacrament of communion. And throughout this new journey of my life of ministry that I was baptized into 50 years ago, I have had the honor of being at the bedside of members of God's family who have come to the end of their earthly life. And I was never told or taught to do what I believe the Holy Spirit has moved me to do. When I go visit someone waiting to see salvation, I take oil and I retrace the cross of baptism on their forehead. And I reaffirm to them that they indeed are a child of God, that he loves them very much, and that Jesus is waiting. And I cannot tell you the power and the beauty the, re the retracing of that baptismal cross brings. For the Lord we dedicate our lives to, the Lord we obey, is certainly a Lord we can rest in. So please continue to come to the waters in the Holy Spirit of baptism. We may not understand all or any of what the baptism of our Lord and our loved ones and ourselves is doing for us at that very moment. But there will be days after we present ourselves to God and begin our life of ministry when it will all become very clear. And there is where we will have our epiphany. As we hear, you are my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Dear Lord, fill our hearts and minds with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that we may fully realize and see clearly that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the promise waited for and the promise kept. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join in the next hymn on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry, 249. Please join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With humble hearts, we offer our prayers to God, our Father and Creator. Heavenly Father, your servant, John the Baptist, witnessed your son, Jesus, to the disciples. We are tasked with the privilege to witness to others our faith in the Messiah. Bless us in our faith journey as we tell the story. God of grace. Healing God, you provide comfort for those with chronic pain, for anyone suffering the loss of a, love, of a loved one. We ask for healing where possible and strength to, to endure whatever may come. Today we pray for Anne, Arnold, Becky, Beverly, Braden, Clarence, Kareen, Darla, Dave, David, Denise, Jermaine, Gloria, Jack, Jaden, Jerome, Jerry, Karen, Carol, Laura, Mary, Nathan, Patty, and Will. And we ask for comfort for the families of Norman Fisher, Tyler Yonke, Parker Wolf, and Rhonda Radke. God of grace. Creator God, the waters of baptism call us into life, into the spirit. As water symbolizes our life in, your, in you, help us to preserve the water resources of the world. Help us to be protective stewards of this earth's resources. God of grace. God of peace. The stars of heaven shine brightest where the night is darkest. When fear attempts to engulf us, guide us to look towards the light, the light of hope, peace, and understanding. God of grace. Guiding Father, help us to see when others are in need. Encourage us not to pause, not to, not to hesitate, but instead to be your hands and feet wherever we can be helped to others. God of grace. Loving Father, we ask for your continued guidance and wisdom as we seek ways for our community of St. John's to serve others. God of grace. Please join in the last petition with everlasting thanks and joy for your love and forgiveness. We ask you to be with us till we meet again. This week, help us to take every opportunity to be thankful for the blessings of each day. Help us to pay attention to how best we can be a gift to others. May we approach each day with soul, serving others, uplifting lives. We ask all in the name of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We will now take our offering.
Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow, your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Please join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The announcements for this evening are um, to remember that we have an annual meeting and to mark it on your calendar to see that you can be here because we need 50 members for a quorum. It is January 28th. Um, we have the backpack program happening and there is help needed at at the food pantry for that. I can, I'll have that up here and you can sign. I forgot to pass it around. It's, it's very easy. Um, Pat does a great job about getting everything ready so you just have to pack the bags and I believe just go deliver everything up to church or up to school. And we have communion this next Sunday and and then our next and communion here on Wednesday nights, February 14th. But I think we have one in January. And I'm not sure which week that is. Next week. Okay. All right. If we can join in. Baptized in Water, 456. Our blessing. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace. Proclaim the news. <laughs> 